Okay, lubing your cast bullets. You know, how, how do you lube them? Which the best lube? How do you go about it? All right. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. I'll go back to the old-fashioned ways. Um, pan lubing. Uh, there's different types of lubricants. There are the older beeswax and alex, which has kind of given way to the more harder, they call it hard uh, or high temp um, bullet loop, okay, which kind of works around the same principles, but the uh, lubricant itself has a higher melting temperature and is not pliable. So once you get it in the grooves and it solidifies or cools, uh, it's in there to stay. There's also tumble lubing, which is a, uh, a process I'll explain in general. People, people seem to like this. There are a lot of people that tumble lube, okay? And there is powder coat, which I've experimented with powder coating, uh, and I'll discuss that now because we're going to stop talking about it. Uh, I experimented with it, and what I don't like about the powder coat is if you want a nice, thin, even coat, around the bullet, you have to do it like with me, the way I thinned out the powder coat material, it's like four times to tumble them, put them in the oven, heat them, let them cool, tumble them again, put them in the oven, like four times. And I actually got something where I like the coat on it, and the hammer test where you smash it with a hammer and the coating spreads out, it doesn't peel off. Uh, I passed that, but I just never loaded them, okay? It, to me, it's a lot of a pain in the ass work. Now, I know everyone's going to argue, oh, well, you know, you just throw them in a tumbler, vibrate them till it sticks on there, and then bake them. And, uh, and I always hear, it works good enough, okay? Or I'm happy with it or whatever. And very rarely do they show you where they're shooting something dead on. Some some people do, some people that really get into it and have perfected it over time. And it's like anything, even this, even casting bullets and using this. It's something, a skill you develop. So powder coating, I don't know. But it is viable. People do it. People like it. It's just my opinion on it. I, I don't fool with it. Okay, so please don't ask me any questions because I don't have any answers. Alright, so let's go in to lubricate in the bullets. In the old days, you had this machine here, the lubricizer. And what you did is you got a tube of lubricant that would fit in there, and that's why these tubes have a hollow hole in them, okay? As you pull this cap off here, it's been stuck on, and there's a threaded rod, and then there's a, a top part. You gotta back that out with the handle. Okay, you get that thing and it's got rubber gaskets on it. You drop the lube down and you know the lube will go down to here and then you get that cap on there and you got to keep cranking it and what it does it applies pressure. Now the old bullet lubes, I have one here. This is uh, Javelina. I remember this stuff. This is for my time. But it says here it is a blend of 50% Alux and 50% pure yellow beeswax. Contains no other waxes or fillers of any type. So basically, that's what bullet lube was. Just uh, Alex and beeswax. And here it is on the paper. You can unwrap it. Well, as you see, it's a brownish color. I didn't want to destroy that. This is an antique. That's why I've kept it all these years. But this was this was uh, a standard for years, Javelin. Now, what replaced it and what used to be available, I got it here. I was using it for something else. This is the lubricant. Uh, this is just Lyman, the standard thing, or NRA bullet lube, they used to call it. It's Alex and beeswax, okay? And as you can see, even though it's cold out here, this stuff is pretty pliable, okay? 
this stuff here. And in the summertime, like now, if you, we were trying to lube with this now out here in the garage in this temperature, it, it would be hard. You'd have to crank and crank and it wouldn't come out. You know, if it was like 85, 90 degrees in here, then this would work a lot better. But this is your Alex Bull. That newest stuff, I, this is what I use. This is the high temp or hard. This company's out of business. And he made these, and how you would use this hard lube is this is an older machine. You'd have to have a heating element underneath it. And what it would do is warm the base, and you would warm this to a temperature around 100 degrees to get it pliable, and then it would go through. What I do is I just melt it down in a pot and pan lube with it. Now to do that, okay, and this is a standard. You, Lyman makes a, a hard bullet lube, and if you go to most of your uh, cast bullet that you buy commercially, have a blue type of lube, which is similar to this. It's the same style, okay? And you can look at it. I don't know what the formula is or what they put in there. Okay, but one thing you're going to need if you do pan lubing is silicone bakeware. And this stuff is impossible to find. The only place you can find it is on Amazon. This is one silicone pan. The reason is, is when you pour that lube in there, that hard lube. Here it is. This stuff is hard, brittle, and once it hardens up, it don't shrink. So what you would do is once you pour it in the pan, and you can see on this piece the outline of the pan there. The silicone bakeware, once you get it in there, you can very easily turn this inside out and get the lube and bullets out of the pan. So this is critical. Do not put that stuff in a steel pan because it won't shrink. It'll go in there, it'll stick, and it will not come out. You got to use silicone bakeware. Keep that in mind. And that's what we use. I kind of give up on the uh, stuff. The older styles. Now, another popular thing, and, and people swear by this, is, you know, we all get our Lee sizers, you get this liquid Alex. And this is the stuff that's mixed in with the beeswax on the older uh, lubricants. Um, like that one thing said, 50% of this and 50% yellow is bee beeswax. And that's what they use. Um, now what people do, and there's several videos and people make these in-depth videos, is they take this stuff, they blend it with other things, and they make their own recipe and make a tumble bullet lube. And how a tumble bullet lube works, liquid lube like that, you get a plastic bucket, you put so many bullets in, you squeeze it out, seal a little pail like a Cool Whip container or something, and you just shake it around by hand until the lubricant covers the whole bullet. And then what I do is go get wax paper laid on a table and dump the bullets out and let them dry overnight. And then they have a coating all the way around. Okay. Uh, in my personal experience, I thought this was neat, and actually Lee makes special bullets with weird little grooves in there for that stuff to draw into it, you know, and that way be lubricated through tumbling. It is a quick and easy method, okay, but I never really quite liked it. I tried it and trying to save time because, yeah, I could cast and do a tumble lube a lot more bullets than I could running it through a sizer or pan lube in or lubricating them the old way. It was faster, but I, I did not like the results. Okay, so I dropped it. All right, but I did go back to this for another bullet, and I'll explain that when I show you bullets here. Uh, then, like I said, you have powder coating, which is another popular thing. Now, another lube that I found by mistake because it's a specialized lube, okay? Uh, this Red Rooster Bullet Lube. All right, and this is for lubricating a paper patch. I was experimenting with paper patching. And the strange thing about this stuff, it's got the consistency, it's this gooey liquid. You put it on the paper patch, you know, I was rolling them wet. 
and getting it on there. And then this, the stuff gets all over the exposed part of the bullet. You know, this is a paper patch bullet. I was trying to roll them wet, and then I'd get it on here and everything. Um, and I fired them. And even though I'm not good with the paper patching that, there was no letting in a gun. So, in the instruction manual, like I'm trying to tell you, the best way to find out what is good for you is kind of experiment with them and see if you like it. Okay. The guy said, try putting the patch on dry. You know, no lube. And he said, just try. So I tried that. I tried that and it was a disaster. It leaded the hell out of the barrel. It took me two hours to get all the lead cleaned out of, of the gun. So, amazingly enough, this strange stuff, even though it goes on thin and you really can't, it dries clear. You can't see it. This stuff here kept the gun from letting up. So now, because I'm coming up, this is, see, this is where I experiment and come up with a different idea. I'm going to get another type of bullet, similar, you know, to this, this torpedo style bullet. But it's going to have less lube grooves and have more long bullet. In other words, you're going to have one lube groove and a gas check and a short ass end. And then this long part is going to more or less ride in a bore for the 8x50 Austrian. So I was thinking once I get the ammunition loaded, take the cases and dip it in this stuff and then put a clear coat of lubing on the lead itself and see if that helps. So you see I'm modifying stuff that wasn't intended for its intended purpose to, to help me do something else. So those are your basic things. You could probably go on YouTube and find more in-depth uh, explanations and that for this stuff. A lot of the older stuff people just pass up and don't, don't use. And I found the biggest problem is a lot of this too is people want to save time. They want the easiest way to do it. This is why this powder coating has become so popular. Um, is it is it's kind of like tumble lubing. You can get a lot of stuff done quick. And there's people that I've seen that they start off like me to me, it's, but they try speeding it up and putting more on. And I don't like the uneven application. That's why I kind of don't like the powder coat. And really, the busy. I don't have time to branch out in a whole new thing and put the time in to prove it right or wrong. Uh, you know, that, that's the bottom line with me. It's taking too much of my time so I could be doing something useful somewhere else to try something new. And I really don't know if the difference, if it would make a difference, okay? Like I said, my way around letting uh, with all these old lubes and concoctions is just to get a bullet bigger than a groove diameter. Now comes to the point, there are bullets that you cannot do this, or there are rifles where this is impossible, and I'll show you something there. So let's take a look at some of the bullets uh, post glue and discuss it. Okay, here are some bullets and some examples of them lubed. This is a 45 APC pistol bullet that I cast years ago, and this was sized and lubed in that uh, orange sizing machine which went down, sized it, and put that uh, beeswax Alex lube. And it's sticky and you see dirt and stuff gets to it, dust over the years. So that's, it's good lube and it doesn't let the barrel, but it just has its, its uh, cons, say, so to say. It's gooey, it's sticky. The bullets left for a long time are sticky all over and tacky um, over time because the heat goes up and down. And, you know, it's got its issues. But it does work. It's the old-fashioned way of doing it. Now, next to that, I can't get it to be, is our pan lube with the hard uh, bullet lube and a gas check. This is our Carcano bullet. And this works quite well. Okay, I, I've had good luck with it. Those of you who've tried my uh, bullets, like them, and it all comes out fairly decent. Okay, now this particular bullet was tumble lubed with the Lee 
alex the liquid alex and what this is if you look right here right where the end of that is that's the heel this is a healed bullet for the french grau rifle and when you seat this the case would come up to here this is a smaller diameter and it's needed so you can chamber it and then hopefully this upper diameter and these I did not size I just did a mass cast this just about hits the groove diameter so I tried this with just a tumble lube on it like this and I did not like I didn't get good results had leading and problems so what I did is I would load this in a cartridge and you gotta remember this is the exposed part from the tip up there is exposed then I melted that's what the last time I used this I melted this uh, Alux and beeswax and I would take the loaded cartridge and hold it up and dip there is a video of me doing it I dip it down and I get that at the right temperature in the pot where it leaves a heavy coat of that beeswax on the nose of this bullet I coat it thick um, it's it's unorthodox it, it makes a cartridge that's vulnerable because it is sticky gooey uh, lube you basically have to keep these in a container protected take them to the range and shoot them and I used this method to lube this bullet like overkill and it works quite well in the gra and also this bullet works in a Mauser 71 rifle. Now, as I was talking about bullet lube, uh, we're going to look at the paper patch, because I mentioned that weird stuff. This is the paper patch bullet, made out of relatively soft lead. You can scratch this with your fingernail. And how a paper patch bullet works is the paper uh, wrapped around is an early primitive form of a jacketed bullet. So in other words, this paper rides in the barrel, not the lead, and then once it leaves the barrel, the, the paper jacket comes off and then the bullet flies. Okay, you want the paper to be riding in the grooves, not the bullet. Well, whoever got this mold made up, I think he made it a little too big. It should be more undersized. With the black powder, it'll bump up. And I've shot original cartridges that were over 100 years old, and it does work. Okay, it's just getting it there. This, the guy's kind of doing it where this bullet will engage the rifling somewhat. Uh, how they made this. But using smokeless powder, that's kind of why I got it. Okay. And this is what I mean. If I change my mind and get a smaller diameter bullet, then I'm going to be, you know, out 150 bucks for that bullet mold. And that idea is gone. This paper has that clear, that red rooster bullet lube on there. And you, you really can't see it. It's clear. It's a very clear, thin coating, kind of hard when it dries. And like I said, what, what I'm going to do for that other bullet that I'm getting is... Uh, move these out of the way. I've got a bullet... That I'm going to try to use as a torpedo bullet. And basically, what's going to happen is you got a long body that'll come down to here on the bullet, and you're only going to have the gas check and one grease groove. So, the majority of this bullet, and it's a tad bit taper, is going to ride the bore of the rifle. It's close, you know, it'll be just under the size of the hole, and hopefully, when it fires, it'll engage the rifling. So, I'm thinking this could be disastrous in terms of letting. So what I was thinking of is, just like with my French Gras, is load the cartridge, dip it in this liquid lubricant, and just coat that bullet with this clear, hard stuff, and that may work, okay, uh, or help cut down on the leading. So as you see, you can experiment and do different things. Um, I know a lot of you just want the information to go ahead. I suggest that you try my technique of pan lubing and I'll go over uh, the sizing equipment next uh, or pan lubing next actually because I'm going to get ready to do some here and we'll look at that next and then we'll talk about sizing equipment in depth